morning friends welcome to the second talk of the december edition of pcns webinars as you all know in modern neurosurgery microsurgical clipping of aneurysms is becoming a fading art owing to the advances in endovascular coiling but quoting the words of professor michael lawton who said no matter how much ever endovascular coiling advances some aneurysms have to be clipped so in this genuine and righteous effort, there are several surgeons around the world striving hard to keep this promising art alive today The speaker for today is such a great neurosurgeon and the legend in the field of neurosurgery. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to introduce you to Professor Yuha Harnas Niemi. He is the Professor Emeritus, Department of Neurosurgery, Helsinki, Finland. Professor Yuha currently works at the Henan Provincial People's Hospital, Yuha Harnas Niemi International Center for Neurosurgery, University of Zhengzhou, China. Professor Yuha, in his vast experience career, has set a benchmark for perfectionism during his tenure at the Helsinki. He has operated more than 5000 aneurysms and published more than 1000 articles during this period. His priceless gift to the young neurosurgeons around the world, titled 1001 Videos from Helsinki is freely available on the net. Professor Yuha has a huge fan following throughout the globe and recently he had an entire issue dedicated to him by one of his earlier colleagues Professor Ip Cherian in his newly launched journal titled The Ignite. We are really thankful to Professor Yuha for accepting our invitation to be a speaker at the ACNS webinars. Professor Yuha is going to talk about microsurgical clipping for basal artery aneurysm. The second speaker for today is our honored guest from China Professor Hong Tao. Professor Tao is the vice president of the first affiliated hospital of the Nanjing University China. He is a renowned authority in the field of neuroendoscopy. He is the chairman of the neuroendoscopy committee of the neuroendoscopy branch of CMDA and also the homecoming of the Europe and America. He is the chairman of neurosurgical branch of Jiangxi Medical Association and also vice president of the neuroscience association of Jiangxi province. We are so thankful to Professor Tao to have agreed to be a speaker on our webinars. The chair for today's webinar is Professor Albert Sufiano, who is the Professor Honorary Doctor of Russian Federation. He is the Chief Physician and Medical Director of the Federal Center of Neurosurgery, Tumen, Russia. He is the Head of Academic Department of Neurosurgery of the First Moscow State Medical University, where he performs more than 800 surgeries per year. He is an active member of the WAN as well as of the IFNE, EANS, ESPN and the Neuroendoscopy Committee of the WFNS. He is the ambassador of UNESCO Chair for Teaching and Research in Digital Anatomy, Paris Discartes in Eastern Europe. We are so glad to have Professor Sufiano today with us to chair this webinar. On behalf of the Education Committee of the ACNS and the President Professor Yoko Kato, I would like to welcome today's speakers, Professor Yuha Harnas Niemi and Professor Hong Tao and Professor Albert Sufiano to this online platform of ACNS webinars. Dr. Liu Bun Seng from Malaysia is, is my co-host for today. And with that introduction, may I please hand over the proceedings to Professor Sufiano. And uh, give possibility for, uh, for, for young residents to, to study these uh, great, great topics. So thank you very much. Thank you thank for you. inviting me here to speak. I will speak about uh, clipping of uh, basilar aneurysms. So I will speak about surgery of basilar tip aneurysms. Like <coughs> I, I was uh, chairman until uh, 2015 in Helsinki, professor and chairman of neurosurgery. There and after that, I have been around the world, South America, USA, Indonesia, Nepal, and now in, in China, third year in China. So this is new experience in China. I'm working in Henan Provincial People's Hospital, Chengzhou, China. Chengzhou is the capital of Henan province with around 11 million inhabitants with two huge hospitals, actually two largest hospitals of the world are located in Chengzhou University Hospital and our Henan Provincial People's Hospital is the second one. So this is the background, what I'm speaking. So I have been working in two centers in Finland, in Kuopio, Eastern Finland, 17 years. And as a chairman in Helsinki, 18 years. And we made extremely good and profound databases on all the aneurysms we have treated there. More than 18,000 patients with 22,000 aneurysms with the exact data and what is more important also long-term follow-up. Out of these 
uh, aneurysms, around 2,000 were in posterior circulation, circulation aneurysms, and I have operated out of them around more than 600 patients. My total experience in cerebral aneurysms is more than 6,000 patients, and one-tenth one of them are posterior circulation aneurysms. So aneurysm of bacillus tip we count, aneurysm of the bacillus bifurcation, origin of superior cerebral artery, and then P1 aneurysms. This is the distribution of the aneurysms in the Finnish databases. You see that the middle cerebral artery aneurysms are the most common, but also high number of vertebral bacillus aneurysms, 16%. And this is due to high uh, high <coughs> the frequent use of CT angio, so we see all the time all the arteries. And out of the vertebral basilla aneurysms, the basilla tip 45%, then vertebra pica 45%, and then in the middle, vertebral basilla junction and basilla trunk around. Uh, 10%. So generally they are rather rare, the bacillus tip aneurysms, 5 to 8% of all aneurysm patients. Usually they are small or medium sized. And these bacillus bifurcation aneurysms, they have three different directions anterior direction, superior direction, and posterior direction. And the posterior direction is the most difficult to treat by tripping because it's close to the perforating branches. Basilla superior cerebral artery and P1 aneurysms are usually free from perforators, but sometimes you have to take care of them. Very small aneurysm of the basilla tip and very large giants are difficult to treat. To preserve the perforators is crucial. Otherwise, you will have most severe complications. Even occluding one perforator may cause the patient to be very heavily invalid. The patient might have tetraparesis, tetraplegia, cranial nerve deficits, low consciousness level, and these crippled patients die, usually eight, caused by perforator injury, or sometimes also rather early. How to diagnose them? We used in Helsinki CT angio 15 years during my time as only the diagnostic means. And we had extremely high level CT angios developed so we could get pictures extremely fast uh, after initial CT and then make CT angio and then even the call same day, same evening to operation room. When operating on aneurysms of the basilla tip, so the proximal control is ac according to my thinking is a must because the cap is very small and if the intraoperative rupture occurs, then you will have difficulties and poor outcome, by far more easy than in anterior circulation. So, depending on the anatomy, you have to use temporary clips on the basilar artery, but even on both becomes, you have to dissect all the perforators carefully and avoid to occlude them. And you should take care of the control trial P1. Clips might not be too long. What I learned from my teacher, Dr. Drake, so the clip must be 1.5 times the base of the aneurysm. This is very simple geometry, but you might not think so often on that. So you have different aneurysms of bacillus bifurcation, bacillus tip. You are doing elective surgery for unruptured aneurysms. Then you have acute surgery for ruptured aneurysms. We operated on in Helsinki acutely, also those 
at the bacillar tip ruptured aneurysms, and as emergencies, if there were many repeated bleedings at the same day, so we operated even in the night. And then we have very difficult aneurysms, large, giant, fusiform, where you have to plan the operation extremely well. So, of course, surgery depends on the state of the patient, how the patient is. I included also poor grade patients in the operative series because I tried always to uh, serve the patients well and, and try to uh, save lives. Then, as discussed, very small aneurysms are difficult because there are very little substance for the clip, and giant aneurysms are, of course, difficult. And ruptured, unruptured state of the wall is important. If calcifications are there, the sort of clipping might be more difficult. In endovascular surgery, the state of the wall is not so important. So I have used subtemporal approach for these aneurysms learned by Dr. late Professor Charlie Drake and Professor Peerless. So this is a good approach for those aneurysms located at the posterior clinoid or below posterior clinoid. You have to use always spinal grain, otherwise you are making a big lesion in the temporal lobe by retraction. And in those high basilar bifurcation, basilar dip aneurysms, I have used the transylvian approach. The spinal drainage is a must when you do subtemporal approach, otherwise you will make a lesion in the temporal lobe. So this is one of the most important things. And when you are dissecting the following uh, videos, we will see how you creep slowly below the subtemporal uh, lobe to the antentory edge, and then you get the CSF out, and then you have more space. And cutting the tentorium, you have to cut behind trochlear nerve. And usually I have used a, <coughs> a broad supporting spatula on the temporal lobe, holding the temporal lobe in the place to have the access to the basilar tip better. And sub dissection is used. And how to find the basilar bifurcation? Oculomotor nerve is the highway to basilar bifurcation. Oculomotor nerve is always between P1 and superior cerebral artery, and this is the only thing that is certainly true in the world. When you have red, angry, swollen brain, you have to have good anesthesia and then spinal drain. I have seldom used ventriculostomy in the basilar tip aneurysms. And now we go to videos. This is the first video is the ruptured basilar bifurcation aneurysm operated on day one or two after rupture. You see, it is around eight millimeter, I would say, from these pictures. Here you see better, it is only five millimeters in breadth. And this is the patient is in park and position. I have used this uh, bigger flap. Dr. Drake used to make a thick craniotomy for his cases, but I don't like it because you have more temporal muscle atrophy, and uh, here you get better access to the, here we are coming to the tentoria edge. You see a lot of blood in the CF spaces, and then you see the trochlear nerve at the tentoria incisura, opening the, cutting the tentorium behind trochlear nerve. And then attaching the 
tentorium leaves to the middle fossa with small aneurysm clips. And then we are ready to go to the basilar tip, cleaning the field. You see a lot of supra, uh, blood in the subarachnoid space. Now you see the oclomotor nerve in the middle of the field. And as mentioned, oculomotor nerve is always above superior cerebral artery and below P1. So this is the route to the muscular tip. And anatomy is, of course, difficult, fresh subarachnoid hemorrhage. So we dissect the basilar artery to put the temporary clip with the golden color on P cam and now on basilar artery between the perforators. And then we go to the anorism. This anorism was directed anterior and superior. So Perforators are not there, and uh, now the first clip is going there on the base of the aneurysm. And now checking the aneurysm. Taking the temporary clips out. Come, basilla, temporary clip out. And now dissecting more on the anorus to be sure that is totally occluded, checking the left posterior cerebral artery, finding it below blood, and then checking with Nobler. And uh, now opening the anorism and cutting the specimen of the anorism for research, putting a second clip there. Like I say, to sleep better. And now the tip of the anorism is taken as a specimen and cleaning the field, taking the tentorial clips away and then applying papaverin and taking the spatula approach spatula away and then removing the entire clips they touch a bleeding so you inject glue and this is post-operative picture the patient had the evd installed before the surgery by in another session. And then next case. This is ruptured basilar artery, superior cerebral artery, and also you see fresh subpragnant hemorrhage, and now larger aneurysm. And uh, what is special in this basilar superior cerebral artery aneurysms? The superior cerebral artery is always coming from the base of the aneurysm, and you have to be very careful taking care of that. Now we are positioning the patient in park bench position. I put the spinal rail before opening, and you should have 50 to 100 cubics from the drain, then you have a slack break. You are not damaging the temporal lobe. Again, here at Tentoria Edge, Oculomotor nerve, trochlear nerve, and opening of the Tentorum is behind trochlear nerve always. And you should take care not to uh, cut the superior cerebral artery, this is below the tentorum also.
So now we have to dissect below the aneurysm to see the basilar artery and have proximal control with temporary trip. I have operated these cases from the side where the aneurysm is projecting. Dr. Drake made some large aneurysm from the control of the approach. Now this is the oculomotor right? And uh, because of the anatomy, you should put the J-formed clip on the base of the aneurysm. Uh, taking very much care that the superior cerebral artery is uh, preserved. Changing the clip position. And now the perforated arteries here, even I told that they are seldom, but there are. So you should save them. And uh, changing the clip position as long as it is exact, and then checking that the arteries are patent. And uh, ICG done, this basilar artery superior cerebral artery open, and then we should see also, uh, here we see the perforating arteries and anus has been coagulated down. So, next case is this is a ruptured P1, P2 aneurysm and a very severe subarachnoid bleeding. Actually, this aneurysm is at the level of posterior clinoid, but I selected here the transylvian approach or lateral supraorbital approach because there's so much blood so i was thinking that the brain is very tight and it, it is more easy to get the slack brain when you go anterior to open the lamina terminalis and then you have enough room right provided by good anesthesia you have good room to operate for the aneurysm. It could be done also by subtemporal approach. So this is the case. Right-sided lateral supraorbital approach. I see the severe subarachnoid hemorrhage, red, angry, swollen brain. Then we go down. And suck blood from the cisterns. And now we are putting already a temporary clip on the Pick up. Okay, anyhow, now we are coming to the Mickey Mouse like anorism, bubble head, and then clipping the anorism. Some bleeding there. And taking the temporary out. So simply come. And then ICG.
see the angio so an also clipped and good perfect clip then i have two videos more Ah, three. The, this is a giant superiosepala atrianorsum. It looks frightening, but when you look carefully on the anorsum, you see that it has extremely small base. So we are doing subtemporal probes and then having the temporary clips in place and then dissecting the rather small base of the anorsum. So rather a short clip can be applied to the narrow neck of the aneurysm. Now taking the temporary clips out, protecting the handle with patty. When you take the temporary clips out, you should open them very slow and take a look. If there is any bleeding, if there is bleeding, then you should close the temporary clip immediately. If you draw it very quickly out, then you might lose the possibility to put it back again. So now correcting the clip position here. and taking temporary clips out. And this gives a good occlusion of this giant Basila superior sepala artery aneurysm with a rather small base of the aneurysm. So this is a Giant bacilla bifurcation aneurysm, 68 years old female, has also middle cerebral artery aneurysm, but this aneurysm was compressing the brainstem. So we again right sided subtemporal approach, we go down. Now the anatomy looks clean because there is no bleeding. Cutting the tentorium again, clips to hold tentorium on the middle fossa, and then checking the situation. Here is the broad base of the aneurysm, temporary clips going to basilla artery and peak hams. You cannot clip that kind of giant aneurysm without temporary clips, and then opening the aneurysm. And of course, there is no return. Now you have to clip the aneurysm when you have opened it. First clip in giant aneurysm should be Fenestrated clip because it is not slipping out. So here going slowly wiggling the clip around the base of the aneurysm. And then I note that the clips are taking the posterior separate artery, occluding it. So I'm traveling backwards. If you have one clip, even not perfect in place should not take it out, but use it to, to put the second clip besides it. And this is done here. So several steps of clipping, adjusting the clips. You see there is a bleeding still from the opened anorism, but slowly the situation will be so that I have two long clips around the base of the aneurysm. Now, of course, you should measure the aneurysm base before the operation. If you don't have long enough clips, you should not operate on these aneurysms because here, for example, you need extra long clips 
to occlude all the base of the aneurysm. And then checking with Doppler that the arteries are open. And here DSA was done also to confirm that the aneurysm is gone. One, one more video. This might be the very important in the discussion because here you see what happens when you just coil these large aneurysms at the basilar tip. The coils are compacted and buried inside the brainstem. And here you have a big recurrence of the aneurysm, but also coils compacted. So, patient came from abroad. So we assessed it that in this case, we could clip the annals. Presigmoid approach was used. And you will see that the patient has aparagoid hemorrhage and then treatment of it with coils. So there is a lot of scarring. And this makes the dissection difficult. Patient symptoms were slight tetraparesis, worsening all the time. And dissecting the base of the aneurysm. Okay, long, tedious dissection of the scarring to see the anatomy, to free the arteries. taking a broad dissector to have a free route for the clip. And now a ring clip is used as a first clip to take the base. And then, of course, if you are using ring clips, you should occlude the fenestration. Second fenestrated clip going there. If you tailor them so that the fenestrations are not at the same level, so you don't have to put a straight clip. The anatomy seems extremely difficult because the scarring, compaction of the coils, presigmoid approach, close to the aneurysm, checking the arteries. We were rather happy when doing this surgery. We had the feeling that we were successful, but the patient was worse after operation. And I think because of the scarring, we lost one perforator. There's a lot of artifacts in the post-operative pictures. We cannot say anything about the possible brainstem infarction, but I suspect because occlusion of one important perforator, the patient was crippled in the bed and went to his home country and uh, remained so long time. I suspect he died later, many months later, this state. So 
we couldn't couldn't help him and this is the difficulty if you have pushed something inside the aneurysms so it is 10 times more difficult to treat the aneurysm by uh, clipping so these are postoperative pictures of course you cannot see any any brain stem infarction in ct good anatomical result coils about the clips aneurysm gone but also one or two perforators and the patient crippled. So, looking at these videos, I, I have to ask, can I do it again? Can I repeat it safely? Or can someone learn it? This is, these are very important questions nowadays. Nowadays, there's huge pressure from surroundings, media, colleagues, lawyers, in favor of endovascular surgery in these cases. So to do that kind of surgery, you have to have extremely good supporting team around you, no angry gossiping around you, no angry eyes gossiping around you. Everybody in the operation room must support your work. And this is for the patient the most important person in the operation room. This is very important that you have a good team to support you all the time. And good teamwork is extremely important in these cases. No one can do surgery alone, good scrap nurse, good anesthesia and others. This is extremely important. This is saying so now, Henan Provincial People's Hospital, the same set and in Helsinki, good scrap nurse, being Chen, helping and good anesthesia. So we can do the surgery, but not the same supportive team than was in Helsinki. So this is from classical picture from Chicago, 1988. My teachers, Professor Yasakil, 63 years old, Professor Drake, late Professor Drake, 68 years old, Look at these guys, they are still at high age. After thousands of operations, they are still learning anatomy. And this is very important message. Medical study is a lifelong study and anatomy even more. This is my teacher, Professor Drake, checking the book on the vertebral bacillar aneurysms of London, London, Ontario. 1,767 cases of posterior circulation aneurysms having surgery uh, experience that can never be repeated again. So this way, Dr. Drake and PLS, when I went first time to London, Ontario, Canada, I couldn't find my way with my big luggage. Then one guy came to ask me, can I help you? It was Dr. PLS. And they both helped me in many ways in my neurosurgical life. So only stupid people still continue clipping. Uh, this so. It is question also of money. In the first world, you ha you are doing endovascular surgery. What about China? In China, poor people have surgery. Those people with insurance or rich people have endovascular surgery because the costs are different. And this is not different from other countries. The same counts for Latin America, India, and so on. So I think what is the solution here? Centralize these lesions in very skilled hands. So in the analysis of Dake Pieles experience, the final outcome in all sizes of aneurysms of the basilar tip was good outcome, 84% in close to 900 cases. My good friend, Alec Christ, now operating on in Little Rock, has a series of 200 patients, 2% 2 mortality and very good results with his uh, transcavernose approach. And these were the Helsinki results analyzed by 
Indonesian fellow Chachari. So 78% good outcome and 11.45% long-term mortality. But I included also grade four and five cases in the vasilatip aneurysms, uh, acute surgery. So finally, to be highest level of neurosurgeons, you have to have good skills in neurosurgery and English skills. This is directed to Chinese neurosurgeons because they should publish more because they have huge experience and big series. And then finally, for the Chinese neurosurgeon, you should learn, for example, from Japanese neurosurgeons, how to take care of the female hair. Don't shave the beautiful Chinese hair. This is the practice still. You should not do that. Look at this young girl, parietal AVM, operated on, hair shaved, and happy girl going home. So I think you should change in China. Focused, minimal, invasive haircut is important. This makes the people by far, by far more happy and they are not so prefer, may accept also open microsurgery. After all, I still think that the perfect clip on the base of these aneurysms remains the best treatment. But of course, it is difficult to have this clip on the base of these aneurysms. Learning curve to clip aneurysms is long. And in China, you have also terrible atherosclerosis, making the clipping more difficult than in other countries. So advertisement, all my videos are on internet, free to get, and also the Helsinki Microneurosurgery book in many languages are in free available. Thank you very much. Kitos, say, say me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Juha Karnisemi, for your excellent, amazing presentation. A lot of experience uh, we received from your lecture. Uh, because uh, uh, clipping is difficult, but clipping of basilea and everything pip is the most uh, difficult uh, clipping uh, topics now for the for the for the neurosurgery. And uh, so, why only very rare neurosurgeon in the world uh, uh, operate this kind of uh, aneurysm surgery? Even in our our clinic, we have um, also hundreds hundreds of cases. So not so many cases about the VST because no sort enough experience. So thank you very much for your amazing lecture. And I, 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 I hope your lecture gives big opportunity for the learning of this difficult uh, side of neurosurgery. And uh, this kind of uh, vascular surgery will be more widely and widely disturbed, uh, more widely widely have experience in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think we'll take one or more, one or two questions before we move ahead with the second talk. But before that, may I please have everybody's attention in the chat box. I have sent the link of the message to all the young neurosurgeons from Professor Yuha, which he has <laughs> written in the Ignite Journal. Anybody who wishes to read this very, very beautiful message, it is all about microneurosurgery, how to train yourself, how to get to the peak of your career, what to do with your career, how to train yourself. Everything is very beautifully described. So I request every young neurosurgeon to go through this uh, uh, link and uh, read this beautiful message. It will be very useful to them. So we'll take one or two questions. Uh, yes, Professor Suresh Nair wanted to leave yeah. at seven. Uh, OK, uh, what a wonderful lecture. It's a, a live uh, uh, work. He was showing great lecture. A uh, couple of uh, uh, questions to you for you. This may be uh, insignificant for others, you know. We suppose you have very high riding aneurysm, very high riding aneurysm. Do you do this uh, extra dural clinoidectomy and then uh, uh, open, open the unroof the optic canal, mobilize the optic nerve medially to get into a, 
picture to the interpretable art also because you know the internal carotid artery blocks your access uh, to, to the depth so to mobilize the internal carotid artery do you take out this uh, clinoidectomy unroof the optic canal open the ring mobilize the uh, after opening the uh, optic nerve sheath mobilize the optic nerve um, internal carotid artery medially and then you have access up uh, that is one question to you and very low riding aneurysms uh, do you do anterior petrosectomy first question if the aneurysm is very high you don't have to do the clinoidectomy you go chest transylvian or lateral supraorbital approach so because if it is very high i am not do, doing any clinoidectomy this i know what you are describing is the transcavernous route to this yeah. aneurysm this is different now i i have done presigmoid approach in these cases okay. presigmoid so with lateral okay. lateral petrosectomy uh, okay. like was done in this case uh, after coil compaction it was a presigmoid approach so it will come very close to this i i have not done no endoscopy except in 90s to open the lamina terminal so i have no experience about endoscopy i think it is a good method and with the two two channels you can do a lot of surgery thank you thank you professor suresh nair that was a wonderful discussion may i please ask one more question to professor yuha over the years how have you incorporated the bypass techniques into your practice i i have to confess that i never learned well because uh, maybe i have told many times that the, when i was a resident so my chairman was against learning of bypass system he was extremely happy then when the bypass study of barnet and pilles came so it killed all the bypass surgery so i learned at the age of uh, of uh, 45 or 50 uh, more than between 45 and 50 i learned the bypass surgery this is too late i learned i have done around 100 more than 100 bypasses but i never learned that kind of good techniques like i have seen seen like supin and so it's a bit uh, i can do it in my mind but my hands are not following it so okay. this is one of the my big failures so you should think you should begin to train very early mm-hmm. already during your medical studies this thank you this, yeah, uh, the bypass nice. techniques and this is very important to learn early and devote time for that when you are young thank you very much professor zubin any comments from you Yes, I agree with uh, Professor Yuha. Uh, bypass, uh, you should uh, uh, learn uh, at early age, and uh, when you your hand is very stable, and uh, then you got uh, very confident and uh, about this surgery, and uh, when you practice more and more. you uh, you got the positive feedback and you will uh, feel even even more confident at this surgery yeah thank you yes we will take one more question before we proceed to the next talk yes my dear friend luke would you like to say something yeah ah uh, yes uh, prof thanks for a very uh, nice presentation i remember i attended one of the talk by professor juha uh, we should learn with a high magnification So my question to Prof is in vascular surgery, what are the I mean the degree of magnification that you prefer the most uh, best working uh, magnification, and also in terms of a uh, light intensity because the higher light intensity will cause damage to the brain. So what are the best uh, light intensity for your work, Professor? Thank you. So I'm using the highest magnification of the operating microscope. What is here? What is our microscope? Fifteen to sixteen. So it is uh, takes some time to learn it, but when you get used, then your hands are going down. You are doing well. I'm using always one hundred percent light intensity. Why? I can use it because I'm using the mouse switch. So I'm moving all the time the microscope. It is not focused in one place. So this is one of the advantages of mouse switch. So you, you can use 
uh, highest magnification, uh, highest intensity of the light. 100%, I always ask. Thank you, Professor. So the time moving. Thank you, thank you very much. Professor Juha, it was a great lecture and we learned a lot from you. Your uh, message to the young neurosurgeons was uh, very, very, very touching and very informative. Thank you for uh, continuing your global neurosurgery education through the grand rounds along with Professor Zubin. We are, the World Neurosurgery is indebted, uh, indebted to you for your efforts especially during this pandemic. Maybe go to the second talk, Professor Sufyan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, Professor Yuha. Uh, thank you. Brilliant, amazing lecture. But uh, next topic is uh, uh, also, also very important for the young resident, for young resident training program. Uh, this is about endoscopic and nasal approach for skull-based uh, tumors. Uh, because uh, the most uh, uh, most the direction of world neurosurgery is now uh, minim minimally invasive. We know big open skull approach for the skull-based tumor, but it is very destructive. So why uh, the all neurosurgeons in the world uh, try to find the way? And this one of these way is uh, the the and, the and another approach. So why? Uh, I, I want to introduce the great expert in this kind of uh, surgery, Tao Hong, uh, about his experience of, about this kind of surgery, uh, this kind of surgery. Uh, please, welcome. Professor Hong Tao. Professor Tao, Tao Hong. Professor Tao. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for your uh, introduction. and. Uh, a moment ago, uh, we uh, have an uh, excellent lecture from uh, Professor Yoha. Uh, when we talk about the, uh, when it's better for to uh, for you to learn the bypass. In my opinion, I think uh, any age is better because uh, uh, when we uh, do much more. Uh, operation uh, in the skull base, uh, we will find the bypass is the same importance for remove the uh, uh, skull base tumor. So uh, I know <laughs> Professor Yuha is not uh, 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 so uh, uh, so agree with uh, uh, the uh, technique uh, with uh, 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 for clipping the aneurysm with the uh, Indonesian endoscopic approach. But uh, today I, uh, I would like to uh, still to introduce uh, some of my experience. So I still uh, like to uh, uh, talk about the uh, uh, endoscopic Indonesian approach for uh, skull-based uh, tumor. So uh, well known about the uh, intracranial approach, but for the actual uh, cranial approach, uh, maybe uh, not so well known about this uh, uh, approach, particularly for the uh, anatomy. But uh, for skull-based lesions, uh, some uh, prob uh, some some lesions uh, may be a uh, problem uh, uh, with the. Uh, uh, intracranial approach, but for other uh, tumors or lesions, uh, maybe uh, actual cranial approach may be better. So uh, here is the uh, uh, skull-based uh, tumor uh, uh, operated with the uh, Indonesian endoscopic approach in our center. Uh, most of them is uh, pituitary adenoma, and uh, second is uh, cranial pharyngioma and uh, meningioma and uh, cavernous sinus tumor. And uh, also for the uh, codoma and uh, trigeminal neuronoma. And uh, for strictly selected cases, uh, we also uh, clip some aneurysm with this approach. So firstly, I'd like to uh, 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 introduce the uh, uh, pituitary adenoma with uh, this approach. 
this is a typical uh, pituitary adenoma. So uh, with this approach, uh, we can open the dura widely and we can uh, dissect the tumor uh, directly under, uh, under the direct view. We can clearly see the, uh, 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 the tumor uh, uh, with the uh, interface, uh, uh, clearly see the, the interface of the tumor and we can dissect the tumor uh, along the interface. So uh, the most advantage of the uh, endoscopic uh, endonasal approach is for the uh, giant invasive uh, pituitary adenoma. Uh, we divided this uh, complex uh, 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 invasive pituitary adenoma uh, into uh, five corridors according to their uh, extend, extending directions. Uh, the first uh, corridor is uh, uh, a corridor. The tumor uh, uh, invaded into the sphenoidal sinus. The second uh, we call B corridor. It is uh, invaded inferiorly down to the uh, uh, crevice bone. Uh, the third is C corridor, that is uh, cavernous sinus corridors. And uh, D is uh, diaphragma city corridor and the E is for uh, those city corridors. So this is a, a typical uh, invasive and uh, jumped pituitary adenoma. So uh, we uh, mark uh, this corridor with a uh, different uh, color. So uh, it, is, uh, it can uh, uh, guard or uh, 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 surgical procedure to remove these uh, 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 more multi uh, corridor uh, tumors. So this is the video uh, for this uh, patient. Uh, after we remove the tumor uh, uh, within the spinodal sinus, then we open the dura, and uh, we firstly we. Uh, remove the tumor within the tola, uh, the, uh, the tosica cella. So here we can uh, see the uh, uh, pituitary gland. Then we uh, remove the tumor uh, around the uh, gland. Then next we uh, go to the uh, cavernous sinus uh, from the uh, middle to the uh, lateral. At this point, we can see a bridge uh, in the middle wall of the cavernous sinus. And here we can see the carotid artery. So we just uh, remove the uh, tumor uh, between the uh, carotid artery and the uh, abducent nerve. So all of this are uh, under the uh, direct uh, view. So, uh, Again, we are back to the uh, middle approach. Uh, we can resect the uh, tumor in the posterior compartment and the superior compartment. So at this point, uh, this is the posterior area of the cavernous sinus. We can also uh, resect this, uh, uh, this tumor uh, from the middle approach. And uh, this is uh, uh, inferior uh, uh, hypophysial artery. Uh, we are uh, cut it down. We are uh, cut it off uh, because we want to further explore, uh, explore the uh, operative view. And uh, we are carefully to suck the tumor and uh, check to make sure we are uh, clearly uh, 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 remove the tumor. So we uh, go to the, uh, uh, the superior extension, the tumor uh, extended into the uh, intracranial cavity. We further open the dura meta and uh, we can see the up nerve. Then we open the uh, uh, arachnoid membrane. So we can see the uh, tumor and the tumor without uh, the protection of the diaphragma. So 
we carefully uh, suck the tumor under direct view. So we can see the uh, tumor in case, um, in case the uh, vital structure, uh, such as uh, pituitary stalk here. And we can see the flow of the third ventricle. Uh, it became very, very thin, but protect this uh, uh, very thin flow is uh, very important. Otherwise, we were easy to into, into the third ventricle. So we keep uh, sucking. So uh, the tumor is soft, so it's easier to suck, but we have to take care of uh, for the uh, uh, vital, uh, in case the vital structures. So we can see the uh, interface between the tumor and the arachnoid membrane. Then we keep going. And still we uh, need to uh, protect the flow of the soda ventricle. And at this point, we move to the uh, back of the uh, up crevice. Um, here we can see the encased uh, P1 and uh, the brainstem. Then we uh, uh, aspirate the tumor and the direct view uh, within the uh, interpeduncle uh, system. So at this point, we can see the third nerve. Then we back to the uh, uh, right side. Here we can see the uh, tip of the basilar and the P1 and SCA on the right side. So uh, we need to take care uh, to protect the perforated artery. So we back to the uh, superior. Uh, we are going to remove the tumor beyond the A1, just uh, here, as the image shows. So here we can see the uh, encased A1. So we need to uh, to uh, uh, to suck carefully because uh, uh, the tumor not only encased the uh, the very circle artery but also in case the uh, small uh, perforator artery. Protect this, this uh, uh, perforator is very, very important. So for such a, a, a joint complex uh, 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 pituitary adenoma uh, with the, uh, 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 the, the strategy uh, just uh, uh, one corridor to another corridor, uh, we can uh, uh, totally remove uh, such a uh, uh, tumors. Here is the outcome uh, in our series with the pituitary uh, adenomas. The second is a uh, cranial frangioma. Uh, for the uh, cranial, this is a typical case of a cranial frangioma. So. Uh, uh, for this case, we also use the uh, Indonesian endoscopic approach. Then we open the dura. So take care for, uh, for the manage of the uh, anterior uh, intercavernous uh, sinus. So after uh, heavy coagulation, then we open the uh, uh, anterior intercavernous sinus. Then we can see the pituitary stalk and we can see the uh, uh, original site of the cranial frangioma uh, just uh, uh, from the uh, junction of the uh, pituitary stalk and the uh, hypothalamus. So we dissect the capsule uh, opposite to the uh, original orange side, it is easier to separate uh, this capsule from these uh, vital structures. 
Then we back to the uh, origin site and uh, dissect the tumor from the uh, uh, from the uh, venture site of the chiasm and the hypothalamus. Here we uh, uh, separate the tumor uh, from the uh, hypothalamus because uh, the direct and the uh, close uh, view. So we can clearly uh, identify the tumor uh, from the hypothalamus. Here we can see the solar ventricle. At the least part, the hypothalamus is uh, became very, very thin. But when we dissect uh, laterally, we found the hypothalamus became thicker and thicker. So all of this is under the direct view without any uh, front uh, rejections. So the tumor was uh, totally removed and we can see the uh, pituitary stalk preserved very well. And uh, we can find the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the flow of the uh, hypothalamus. Uh, this is a post-operative post uh, MRI scan show the tumor was totally removed this is the outcomes uh, in our series with uh, cranial frangioma. The three, uh, uh, the past three is uh, meningioma. Uh, this is a typical uh, tubercul uh, tubercular meningioma. We also use uh, uh, endoscopic in the nasal approach. The advantage of this approach for meningioma is uh, uh, we can early uh, devascularization and uh, remove the uh, invaded bone and uh, invade, invaded dura. So uh, just like the uh, uh, microsurgical principles, uh, firstly, we are debulking the tumor. Then after that, we uh, separate the, uh, the tumor uh, actual capsularly and we can clearly uh, find the small artery and uh, uh, supply the tumor, coagulate it and uh, cut it. Then keep dissection and uh, we can uh, dissect tumor uh, uh, actual uh, erectile actual arachnoid membrane because uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, growth direction is uh, in line with uh, all uh, uh, direction of the approach. So at this point, we need to take care uh, to protect the complex of the uh, anterior uh, communicating artery. And also we can see the, uh, we can clearly see the uh, interface between the tumor and the chiasm and the interface between the uh, uh, tumor and the pituitary stalk. So the tumor was totally removed, but with the uh, uh, no change of these uh, vital structures. This is uh, the post-operative uh, MRI scan. This is uh, another case uh, with uh, Petrocravus meningioma. And uh, also these patients, we also uh, use uh, uh, endonasal endoscopic approach. So, uh, after remove the bone medial to the carotid artery, then we uh, expose the uh, uh, the uh, posterior uh, cranial process. After uh, we remove most of the uh, posterior uh, 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 cranial process, we can expose the upper part of the uh, uh, tumor base. Then we uh, open the uh, dura medial to the uh, carotid artery. 
So at this point, we can clearly see the uh, abducent nerve and the uh, doro canal here. So this is the uh, base of the tumor. We uh, uh, increase the opening of the dura uh, in order to uh, totally uh, expose the base of the tumor. Then we uh, coagulate the base of the tumor and, and debulking the tumor. So after that, we uh, dissect the arachnoid uh, uh, membrane from the surface of the tumor, and we can clearly see the uh, interface between the uh, between the brainstem and the tumor, and very carefully to uh, dissect uh, the tumor from the brainstem. Here we can see uh, some uh, artery attached to the surface of the tumor. It is uh, not uh, difficult to dissect them from the tumor. So we keep dissecting. And here we uh, found a uh, uh, artery uh, close attached to the uh, attached to the uh, uh, surface of the tumor. Uh, we need to uh, 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 patiently to uh, uh, to dissect this artery uh, from the tumor. When the tumor was removed, uh, we can see the uh, uh, the brain stem is intact. This is a post-operative post uh, CT scan and the enhanced uh, uh, MI uh, scan. This is another uh, petrocarbous uh, meningioma. Uh, in this case, we can see the tumor. We can see a tumor located on the uh, crevice and uh, in the middle of the cavernous sinus. So we are uh, inside the, the dura between the uh, uh, pituitary ground and the uh, carotid artery. Usually when we open this uh, uh, dura, we can see a, a tremendous uh, a venous bleeding, but in this case, it's uh, uh, no bleeding, but instead of uh, a tumor. So for, for such part of a tumor, it is uh, difficult to remove uh, from the uh, intracranial approach. So we uh, unilaterally transfer the uh, uh, pituitary ground and we also uh, remove the tumor behind the ground and the, the uh, uh, invaded bone. So this is a, a posterior kind of process and uh, the dorsal ciliary they are all uh, uh, invaded by the tumor. So uh, for this approach, we can uh, resect the uh, uh, invaded tumor, invaded the bone, invaded the, uh, the dura, but at the same time, it is also the uh, one part of this approach. So we remove the uh, uh, posterior uh, canal process on the left side. So we can see uh, this is the base of the uh, tumor. So after remove the tumor, we can see if we push the uh, ground uh, downward, we can increase the superior cavity when we elevate the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, ground, we can increase the inferior cavity. 
So this is a, a very uh, uh, good uh, approach. This is the posterior uh, operative uh, MRI scan. So this is the outcome in our series with the meningiomas. Part four is uh, uh, about the cavernous uh, tumor. Uh, this is a, a typical. Uh, this is a typical uh, pituitary adenoma invaded into the uh, right side cavernous sinus. Uh, it is a, a nose grade four. We can see the uh, uh, internal carotid artery was totally encased by the tumor. This is a operative video. Then firstly, we remove the uh, tumor in the, uh, in the Tosca city. Then after that, we uh, expose the anterior wall of the cavernous sinus. Here we can see the uh, carotid artery. So we remove the tumor medial to the carotid artery and also go to the posterior part of the cavernous sinus. Then we go to the lateral side of the carotid artery and we open the, uh, uh, the uh, approximate dural ring, uh, lateral side of the approximate dural ring to uh, 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 mobilize the uh, carotid artery. Here we can see the six nerve. And from this uh, narrow space, we can, uh, uh, we can uh, remove the tumor located superior, uh, in the superior compartment. Then, we are uh, removed the tumor below the uh, obtusant nerve. We can see the V1 here. So the tumor was totally removed. Here's the post-operative uh, uh, MRI scan show the tumor was totally removed. Uh, although the, this tumor is uh, nosebleed grade four. Another case is a uh, recurrent meningioma uh, which uh, invade uh, into the uh, uh, Tosca city and the cavernous sinus in the left side. This is the uh, operative video. So here we can see the uh, video canal and the Tosca city. So firstly, we uh, 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 expose the uh, opposable segment of the uh, carotid artery because uh, uh, for this uh, operation, the, uh, the risk uh, for the uh, carotid artery injury is higher. So we need to uh, uh, firstly expose the uh, opposable uh, segment of the uh, internal carotid artery. Here's the internal carotid artery uh, before we further uh, dissection, uh, we need to make sure we can uh, temporarily control this uh, uh, artery. Then we uh, remove the uh, anterior carotid process. Uh, this is, uh, uh, we firstly develop this uh, technique. We can see the, uh, uh, the bone of the uh, anterior process is invaded by the tumor. And we also see the dura is also invaded by the tumor. So we dissect the tumor uh, lateral uh, to the carotid artery and the uh, uh, invaded tumor uh, between the, uh, uh, the dura region. Then we go to the uh, middle side of the uh, carotid artery. So here we can see the superior hypophysial artery. We uh, 
uh, coagulated, then we can into the, the uh, middle uh, cavity, uh, middle to the uh, superior carotid segment of the internal carotid artery. Then we can go lateral side of the superior carotid, uh, superior carotid uh, segment of the artery. Here we dissect the tumor uh, in the, uh, the tumor encased the third lobe on the lateral side of the cavernous sinus. So here we can see the, uh, the fourth nerve and the sixth nerve. Then we can see the uh, optic nerve was encased by the tumor. So we can uh, dissect the tumor below the optic nerve or above the optic nerve. So after the tumor removed, we can see the uh, uh, the segment of the uh, cardiac artery in the cavernous sinus communicate to the uh, superior segment, uh, superior carotid segment of the internal carotid artery. When we uh, push the artery laterally, uh, medially, we can see the uh, third nerve on the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus, and we also can see one uh, artery. This is a post-operative uh, MRI scan and the CT scan. So this is the outcome uh, in our series with uh, cavernous uh, sinus tumor. Then we go to the trigeminal neuronoma. For this uh, uh, tumor originated from the uh, uh, gastrin uh, ganglia, uh, we can uh, approach, we can remove the tumor with the uh, endonasal endoscopic approach. So we are, we are open the dura lateral to the uh, uh, internal carotid artery to into, into the max cave. This is uh, within the max cave. So after debulking the tumor, we are dissect the interface of the tumor, medially and the superiorly. So on the lateral side of the tumor, we see uh, numerous uh, uh, nerve branch uh, attached to the surface of the tumor. Under the direct view, we can carefully uh, dissect this uh, uh, branch of the nerve uh, away from the uh, tumor. Although we don't know uh, this uh, 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 branch belongs to V1 or V2 or V3, but we can protect most of these uh, uh, nerves from the tumor. So after tumor removed, we can see the, uh, the gastrin ganglia here and the, uh, the entrance of the uh, uh, trigeminal nerve into the max cave. This is uh, a postal uh, enhanced uh, MRI scan. So this is uh, another case uh, with uh, 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 left side schwannoma, uh, but co Coexist with the uh, uh, unruptured Acon aneurysm. So this is a uh, 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 dumbbell shape of the tumor here. And from the uh, CDA, we can see the uh, there's uh, uh, aneurysm uh, in the uh, Acon uh, with uh, uh, anterior inferior projections. So after consult with the patient and the relatives, they are agree to manage these two lesions at one stage. So firstly, uh, we are going to uh, clip uh, this uh, uh, anterior communicating artery uh, aneurysm. So we can see this is chiasm 
and uh, we can see this is uh, the A1 of the uh, left side. This is the neck of the aneurysm, and uh, we can see the uh, aneurysm project anteriorly. So we firstly we use uh, a clip temporarily to clip the neck of the aneurysm. Then we further dissect the aneurysm from the neighboring uh, brain tissue. So we can clearly see the uh, opposite side, uh, the uh, opposite uh, A2 and uh, A count. So at this time, because uh, this uh, clip is a little bit large, so I uh, change it to a, a mini uh, clip. So we can see the uh, uh, right side A2. Then with a mini uh, clip. So the aneurysm uh, was totally uh, clipped and uh, with the patency of the A1 and the A count. So after that, we are going to uh, remove the tumor, the schwannoma. The first incision is lateral to the internal cardiac artery. So we soon uh, entry into the max cave. Again, when we dissect the lateral side of the surface of the tumor, we can see the uh, uh, attached uh, branch of the nerve. So after the tumor removed, we can see the whole uh, max cave. Then we open the dura medial to the uh, internal carotid artery to remove the uh, tumor behind the crevice. Also under the direct view, we uh, clearly uh, dissect the uh, artery from the tumor. All of these uh, uh, follow the uh, uh, microsurgical principles. Then we uh, keep dissection and when we recheck the tumor, uh, we still uh, keep the uh, endoscope deep to the back of the tumor. So we can see the root of the uh, trigeminal nerve. Then the tumor was uh, totally removed and uh, removed from the uh, max cave. So this is a post-operative CDA, uh, MRI, showed the uh, aneurysm was totally clipped and the uh, artery A1, A2 is patent and the tumor was removed. So this is the outcome in our series with trigeminal neuronomas. So, Many people will ask me the questions for uh, uh, you uh, deal with such kind of uh, complex uh, uh, skull based lesions. Uh, once the, uh, uh, the uh, in, uh, internal carotid artery injured, how we can manage that? So uh, several years ago, we developed a technique according to the uh, microsurgical uh, technique uh, in the uh, transcranial approach. So uh, we developed a uh, 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 proximal control and uh, distal control. So for distal control, we have two sides. One side is uh, distal to the uh, distal dural ring. Another uh, distal control is uh, approximate to the uh, approximate dural ring. For the uh, approximate control, we uh, select the segment 
uh, just uh, uh, on just uh, in the up uh, third one segment uh, of the uh, pyroclavus uh, segment of internal carotid artery. So this is uh, uh, operation. Uh, Uh, with the uh, aneurysm clip. So we firstly, we uh, expose the uh, pyrocella uh, clavus uh, uh, internal carotid artery in case the uh, uh, rupture of the uh, internal carotid artery. So before we further uh, have our procedure, we need to make sure uh, we can temporarily uh, control the uh, proximal uh, carotid artery. Then we keep going to, to the next step. So this is a, a recurrent tumor. We evaluate these patients before the operation. Uh, we think this is a high risk of internal carotid artery injury. So before we uh, uh, remove the tumor, we uh, expose the uh, proximal site and the distal side for temporary control. So we uh, remove the tumor between the carotid artery and the uh, uh, and the pituitary ground. So this is the site for the uh, distal uh, temporary control. This is the carotid artery. This is the uh, uh, pituitary ground. So we totally remove the tumor surrounding the carotid artery. Fortunately, uh, in this patient, the carotid artery uh, is not injured. Another technique we developed is uh, uh, anterior cranotectomy. Uh, uh, crano so uh, for this technique is uh, a little bit risk uh, for because uh, uh, it's uh, surrounded by the uh, carotid artery optic nerve, so we need to uh, uh, carefully to drill the bone. We just drill the bone to be very very thin, then we fracture it instead of uh, we drill away uh, all the bone. Otherwise, uh, you will probably uh, increase the risk to injured the, in, uh, the internal carotid artery. So here the internal carotid artery, this is the roof of cavernous sinus. Uh, this is the uh, optic canal, optic nerve. So we just uh, uh, make the bone to be very, very thin, then fracture it. In this way, it is uh, safe to remove the uh, anterior cranial process. So we uh, remove part of the, uh, 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 the uh, anterior cranial process. So for this technique, we can uh, approach to the lateral side of the carotid artery. Uh, traditionally, the, uh, uh, the limit is uh, located medial to the carotid artery. But with this technique, we can expand the limit uh, to the lateral side of the carotid artery. So with these techniques, uh, uh, I just want to show one, uh, 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 one case with the internal carotid artery injury. Uh, this is a recurrent codoma. Uh, 
before the uh, uh, the uh, dissection, uh, we expose the uh, proximal segment to make sure uh, once the artery uh, injured, we can uh, temporarily control the the bleeding. Then we are. Uh, then, unfortunately, these patients, uh, the the internal carotid artery is injured, so we just as uh, we expose uh, before operation, so we clip the uh, pericardial artery and proximal artery and uh, distal artery. Then we can clearly see the extent of the injury and the location of the injury. So in this patient, we uh, decided to uh, repair the injury with uh, direct uh, suture. Although uh, it is uh, difficult to, uh, to, uh, to, with this uh, procedure, but it is possible. So with three sutures, the artery was a uh, uh, complete repaired. Then we release the uh, uh, the two clip. We can see the cardiac artery is uh, uh, almost intact. So we can keep to uh, remove the tumor. Then lastly, I just uh, like to uh, introduce uh, one case of the aneurysm. We totally uh, clip uh, 15 uh, aneurysms uh, with uh, 10 cases of patients. This is a uh, uh, patient, a uh, 47 years old female, and uh, he, uh, she has uh, three uh, left pericardial aneurysms. From the DSA, we can see uh, one pericardial aneurysm project medially, another uh, pericardial aneurysm project laterally just uh, superior uh, to the uh, anterior carotid process and uh, with a very, very uh, tight, uh, uh, very, very tight, uh, close to the uh, anterior carotid process. And uh, the, the sort of aneurysm is uh, within the cavernous sinus. So this aneurysm, we are not going to uh, manage it. So we can clearly see one aneurysm uh, project medially, another aneurysm project laterally, and the third aneurysm is within the cavernous sinus. So, so here we can see uh, the uh, a very complex relationship between these structures. Uh, the third nerve here, the uh, aneurysm here, the uh, ophthalmic artery here, the uh, carotid artery here. So only with this approach, we can clearly identify uh, this uh, complex relationship between the, those structures. If we uh, uh, clip transcranially, we seldom can see these structures. So with clearly, uh, we clearly see this uh, uh, relationship, so we can manage it uh, uh, better. So firstly, we uh, dissect the aneurysm project immediately. Yeah. 
we grouted the artery. So in this case, uh, before the operation, we use the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, evoke uh, potential, the visual evoke potential to monitoring the, uh, uh, to, mor to monitoring because uh, uh, before the operation, we uh, want to uh, uh, coagulate the ophthalmic artery to increase the, uh, the uh, uh, space to clip the aneurysm laterally. But when we clip this aneurysm, the uh, potential is changed after uh, three or four minutes. So I have to uh, adjust this clip several times to make sure the uh, potential is not, uh, is not changed. So we are, we are going to uh, uh, clip the, uh, uh, the aneurysm project laterally. So before that, we need to uh, uh, do the uh, anterior craniotectomy. So we can see, we can enter into the lateral side of the uh, carotid artery. So at this point, we open the distal, uh, the lateral, the lateral side of the distal dural ring, just like the site uh, after we remove the uh, anterior canal process uh, with the intracranial approach. So we we are meet in this point. So at this point, we can see the anterior part of the uh, the neck of the aneurysm. So after elevate, elevated the uh, optic nerve, you can see the superior part of the, uh, the uh, neck of the aneurysm. So at this time, we are temporarily control the proximal uh, side of the internal carotid artery. Then we are uh, under the ophthalmic artery, we are uh, clip the uh, aneurysm project laterally. then the two aneurysm was clipped at one stage. This is the, another case, uh, I quickly skip this one. So, so this is the outcome of the uh, all serious with the aneurysms. Uh, totally uh, with uh, 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 Indonesian endoscopic approach, we maybe have some uh, complication, but this complication is very low. So I think it's uh, acceptable. So for our neurosurgeons, uh, in spite of, uh, we, need, uh, uh, we need to know uh, the uh, intracranial approach, but uh, it's better if we also know how to use the uh, actual cranial. <clears throat> if uh, you master both of the technique, your patients may be, uh, get more benefit. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, Professor Sufiano. Yeah, Professor Hontao is, is really, um, really amazing presentation. We have little bit experience in this kind of surgery, but what you show us today is top. Is top, really top, because I'm never mind in my what it's possible operate uh, from the nose like in open microsurgery with proximal control and so on like this. What you show for us. It's really, it's really a lot of information, even for uh, experienced neurosurgeon. Thank you very much for your lecture. Uh, your technique about the, but your technique is a little bit risky. Uh, for example, you're, you're, you're shooting, shooting the, 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 the ICU from the nose. Uh, it's, it's really amazing because I have little bit experience by shooting in the nose. It's difficult, really difficult. Uh, how you tied the suture? How is you tied the suture? <laughs> 
because I see you see by handled uh, by handled manipulation. Uh, how you how you how you manage in the narrow, and what kind of needle needle holder you use? Oh, okay, as I said, it's uh, very uh, difficult. Uh, the present. Uh, I know, I know. So why I, I ask? How you how you tied the suture? <laughs> uh, I just uh, with uh, uh, with the uh, equipment and uh, 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 one by one, uh, you know the, the space is very narrow. But uh, we just uh, if we, the space is not enough, then we uh, uh, change the uh, the place uh, to uh, get more. Uh, Space to uh, type type the suture. Is it, is it, is it two, two, two neurosurgeon or one neurosurgeon tied the suture? One neurosurgeon. One neurosurgeon. So, so yeah. two, uh, two hand. Uh, one is a uh, uh, hand of the uh, endoscope, another yeah. neurosurgeon to suture the okay. Uh, procedure. Uh. Okay, okay. Okay. What kind of hemostatic may be used? As a, as a type, uh, type of hemostatic you use, maybe flow seal like this, maybe. How you, how you stop the cavernous sinus uh, bleeding? Uh, there's a several to, to, to stop the uh, cavernous bleeding. Uh, one is uh, you can elevate the position. Uh, the second, you can uh, use the uh, uh, cotton. But the best uh, uh, best way to manage the bleeding is the surge flow. That's a mixture of okay. surge flow. Yes. Okay. Right. And uh, what is the key, for your opinion, key key procedure in uh, a manage of the ICU? <laughs> key. ICU, key. ICA. I, I see. I see. I see. Sorry. I see. Uh, management okay. key. Uh, the key, the key step to manage this uh, ICA injury, uh, in my uh, opinion, is uh, we developed the, the technique for proximal control and distal control. Because uh, uh, after uh, totally uh, stop the bleeding, so we can uh, observe the, uh, the injury site with uh, uh, the extension the uh, size and the location, so we can decide uh, uh, which way is the best way to uh, manage this uh, uh, injury. Um, for most of the case with the internal carotid artery injury, we use the uh, coagulation. And some, if we are, uh, before, we, before the operation, if we are evaluate the uh, collateral circulation, uh, the, if the patients had a uh, good uh, uh, collateral circulation, uh, probably we will sacrifice the uh, artery. But for some cases, just uh, like I show you, uh, we just uh, repair the uh, injury with direct uh, suture. Okay, thank you very much. But for me, for my opinion, also need a large uh, bone resection. About, uh, around the IC, IC, ICU. This is also very important. Large bone uh, dissection. Because yes. ICU is yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very important. Yes. Yeah, more, one of the most important keys is uh, uh, dissect, uh, resection of the bone around. You must free freedom. You must have freedom. <laughs> yes. Uh, no limit, no, 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 no limit resection, no limit resection, not afraid resection of the bone. I don't, yes. uh, it's kind of it. <laughs> thank you very much. Excellent, excellent presentation. Excellent, thank you. I thank really you. enjoy it. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, uh, Professor Hong Tao. That was really some next level stuff, very yeah, interesting, next. very informative, and really very challenging. May I uh, request Professor Yuha to give his comments? Ah, those wonderful skills, great experience, wonderful skills, and uh, wonderful knowledge of anatomy and good dissection. I was thinking when I saw your beautiful surgeries, I was thinking you could design more tender, more uh, better micro instruments for this surgery. You could, you should do more more tender and more 
sophisticated instrument. Because they look rather rude under your the beautiful field. So better schizos, better dissections, and certainly, certainly you can get them. So you will do even better. But it was beautiful lecture, wonderful skills, and great, great experience to see that. Thank you, Professor, Professor Zubin, your comments? Yeah, it's a really wonderful presentation. And uh, Professor Hong Tao is a very famous neurosurgeon in China and uh, uh, also famous for his uh, uh, very uh, skillful technique. And uh, he just presented his uh, uh, beautiful techniques of endoscopic surgery. Yeah, that's why I recommended him to, to <laughs> attend this presentation. <laughs> it was really great on yeah, yeah. the uh, professor really invitation. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful uh, webinars. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Shi. Thank you so much. So then uh, I think we have far exceeded our time, but it was really worth to see those wonderful videos from both Professor Yuha Hatnis Niami and Professor Hong Tao. I think Professor Tao's uh, video should be accompanied by a short statutory warning below the videos that these are performed by very skilled experts and should not be replicated unless they are highly trained. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I'll conclude this officially on behalf of the Education Committee of the ACNS and our president, Professor Yoko Kato. I would like to sincerely thank today's speakers, Professor Yuha Harnasniami and Professor Hong Tao for giving us such a beautiful lecture in their respective fields of expertise. Special thanks to Professor Albert Sufiano, who despite his very busy schedule, took out his time to share this webinar. Thank you very much, Professor Zubin, for uh, your uh, wonderful and tremendous support for the ACNS. Thank you all the special guests who joined today, Professor Suresh Nair, Professor Mohan Sharma. Thank you, Dr. Liu Boon Seng, my co-host for today. Thank you for joining. So until uh, next Wednesday, it is bye-bye from all of us. Thank you very much.